Oh, man. Oh, man. I should have said, it's me, it's me, it's (laughs) D-A-B-L-O-C-K. You know we had to start it off proper. We got Tilly Tilly on the phone right now. We're maintaining a social distance. (laughs) A social distance. But we're still bringing you the latest in WWE and NXT as well as SmackDown. Because it's like they're branding them as three different things. The what, three? The brand, it's almost like the brand, it's like the WWE is one brand, SmackDown is one brand, NXT is one brand, and Raw is one brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're all... That's why in November we get Brain Warfare, Zach. Survivor Series. Yes, sir. Oh, man. The only pay-per-view where Raw and SmackDown and NXT collide. (laughs) Go head to head to head. Had to give it to old Michael Calder. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) All right. Oh, man. So we'll, we'll get this started. Um, Zelina Vega and her crew crashed MVP's VIP lounge. Yeah, uh, so this is, I'll, I'll say on air what I messaged you while I was watching it. Uh, is, is there anybody that gives a fuck about MVP? Um, surprise, he's still, I, I, for the, from what I remember, his Royal Rumble appearance was supposed to be his last match. No, the day after. The Raw after. The Raw after? Okay. Yeah. He faced Rey Mysterio in a singles match the night after Royal Rumble, and he announced that that was his final singles match. And then last week, he was in a Money in the Bank qualifier. Yeah, that kind of seems contradictory, no? It, 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 would, it would absolutely be contradictory. Uh, MVP, you promised you were leaving us alone. Uh, <laughs> get the fuck out. <laughs> you said, get going! Um, yeah, also, also what I will say is the other thing that I messaged you during, uh, while I was watching it is, holy shit, Zelina Vega's outfit was on point. Like, that why? That girl is crazy. Why are her shoes so platformed? Like, because otherwise she's three foot two. Ha! <laughs> Yo, yeah, but how does she walk on that piece? I have to give her credit for walking on that still. Although, credit for walking on those, for wearing everything she's wearing, for doing it all on TV. Uh, oh, credit for everything in Las Vegas. Yeah, man. She is the shit. Like, she definitely has some kind of skill if you're going to be able to maintain some sort of, you know, apparel on after Wolverine hit it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, there's less fabric than there is skin on that outfit, and I appreciate that. I ain't mad at it all. I ain't mad at all. <laughs> but yeah, getting it with this uh, runabout led into Rey Mysterio, Alistair Black, and Apollo Crews defeating Andrade, Angel Garza, and Austin Theory. Yeah, who would have guessed a six man tag match was coming? Um, <laughs> Charlie trying to ask uh, Andrade questions, 
uh, Selena telling Charlie that her whack ass will never, ever ask her a direct question again. Um, and then as they walk away, Angel Garza coming up with flowers and just charming the pants right off of Charlie. Oh, man. It's so good. Oh, uh, that's so classic. Good. Give, him the, give him the Rico Suave gimmick. Give him. That's gold right there. All right. Yeah, it was it was smooth shit. <laughs> I was gonna miss that one. I I saw I saw bits and pieces of Raw. I've been in the studio for honestly the better part of the last four months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, true, true. And even more so in the last like eight weeks. But you know. Yeah. Um, it's 100%. good to be able to catch up on this WWE action. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. That being said, Nia Jax bashed Asuka and Shayna Baszler with the ladder. Yeah. Uh, Asuka and Shayna were having a... Uh, well, actually, no. I guess it was supposed to be a full on triple threat match. Uh, but big old dad Nia Jax came in and beat the living shit out of both of them. Um, so, from what I understand, they, I feel like they said this during either Raw or SmackDown. Uh, oh, I think SmackDown, yeah. Daniel Bryan said it during Raw. Oh, well. Are both of the Money in the Bank matches happening at the same time? No. That's what that's what Daniel Bryan said. He said six men and six women will go compete at the same time. So, wow. I, I, I mean, I hope it's two separate matches. I feel like one, two matches happening at the same time is too much. Not really. If you if you get the cameras the right way, bro, you can focus on the women for a couple minutes and focus on the men for a couple minutes and go back and forth between matches. But I feel like that, that see, that, it, I feel like it diminishes both by not giving attention to each match on its own. I don't know, man. Like it's kind of pushing them together. When I, I don't know, that feels weird to me. We'll see. Like if they pull it off, awesome. I don't but know. I feel like that does set up a uh, that it, it's going to be much more difficult to make that uh, make both shine rather than giving them their own time. I beg to differ. Like just, I beg to differ. It, it, I think I, I think ahead. it'll be I think it'll be a little bit more intense because it's so much more difficult to make it to make more people shine at once. Like, that's why that's why ensemble movies are so much harder to do, right? Because you have to give all the characters equal time. Ocean's Eleven worked perfect. Ocean's Eleven through, what, 13? Worked perfect. It's what? Ocean's, the Ocean's Eleven, the Ocean series. Yeah. That no, worked I'm perfect. Not, no, 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 you're, you're misunderstanding what I'm saying, I think. I'm not saying you can't do a good ensemble movie. Because obviously you can. What I'm saying is it is much more difficult to do. The Oceans movies are genius. They, they are genius level movies of that. There is, not, there is no amount of work recently other than maybe the Firefly Funhouse, which is a very different thing, that is on the genius level of Oceans 11 coming out of WWE. Well, the, the Undertaker that. fight, the, um, the, the Boneyard no, match. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. With two people. Okay. No. And, well. the, and and the same with the other one. I'm talking about an ensemble match where you now have to focus on 12 people going for two separate uh, goals I and th- having it all be interesting. I think it'll be chaotic. I think that I think the paths are gonna cross one time or another. I think this is gonna be the first time you're gonna see the women and the men actually interact for a Money in the Bank match. But why would they interact? That's what I mean. Why would they interact? Well, they're not, well, I, I'm they're, not exactly. Not... I'm not 100 percent sure who's in it right now. I'm bad for that. I'm bad for that. But if you're tell me who's in it, I can almost guarantee that one or another of them, like Otis, is in it. Is Mandy not in the? No, Mandy's injured. Mandy's injured. Okay. Oh, so there, there goes no, that there's, theory. There's, there's no reason for anybody in the men's and the women's to interact with each other. And it's like, it's just, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to, to make it more complex than you have to when you're working under already strained, like, when you're already working under the constraints of the coronavirus and that, and that fucking global pandemic. Because 
then have to make a 13th because let's not forget, you still can't have more than 10 people right next to each other. Uh. And just in match number, 6 and 6 for just competitive. Well, maybe they're just going to set, well, put them all in different rooms to start. Maybe. Put them all in different rooms know. to start. I don't know. Once again, I mean, it just leads to what I was saying, which is it's way more complicated than it needs to be, and that usually ends up being a bad thing for WWE. I don't know, man, but as of late, I find because they're focused less on having to worry about the fans hijacking the show, that they've had more time to put creativity into their matches. They do, they do, they definitely do it some. I'm just, like I said, it's just, it is a very, uh, very risky step to then be A, breaking that, you know, that order large gathering and be trying to make sure everyone gets everything like and but like it's just it is so complicated what they're trying to do if they're trying to do that well we'll see next week how it goes we will see WWE Money in the Bank brought to you by some expensive corporation I mean it looks young it's probably Snickers <laughs> Oh, man, and it will be fought in the hallowed halls of WWE headquarters. That's insane. Yeah. That's insane. All right, we got more cultural depreciation. I'm joking. Bobby Lashley defeats Denzel Desjardins. Why does he look like um dude from primetime? Not primetime. Desjardins kind of looks Street like Profits? the... Yeah, Street Profits. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, maybe because you're a racist. Are you saying all black people look alike? I would never say such a thing, although the fact that this is <laughs> this is more black-on-black black violence that I'm willing to ad- appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, you know, jo- Jobby McJobberson came in, got squashed by Robert Lashley. Uh, I, it's doing nothing. I can't, I can't get invested in Bobby Lashley. Wow. I just I can't take this Lana shit and like even when Lana's not there they're making it like about Lana. Yeah. And it's just it's weird. It's weird. Weird thing. Wow. All right. And for those of you who have been following us and realized we weren't on last week, good call. Life gets busy. Exactly. We, we just gotta live it. All right. Yeah. Liv Morgan. Fuck that Exactly. Liv Morgan defeated Ruby Riot, which isn't what the picture yeah, depicts. Great picture. Uh, they are just. Uh, they, they are feeding Ruby Riot to Liv Morgan week after week. This is the second Raw in a row that Liv beat Ruby. Wow. Um. So yeah. Uh. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing with with Ruby. She just came back. And now she's, you know, being squashed out to live. Live thing seems to be they're trying to push her towards like, uh, baby, like millennial baby face sort of thing. Though I don't know what I'm, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know I'm gonna get there and blah blah blah. Doesn't seem like very much like who Liv really is. Like Liv's personality on her own shit, where she's like kind of wild and shit like that. Uh, they're. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird story they're doing with this right now because I, I can't really tell what the story is. It's just that she beat Ruby twice. Okay. Well, I mean, it's interesting to see friends turn foe, but I guess in the WWE, it, that's how the story goes. Yeah, I mean, they they did it, and then Sarah Logan got the boot, and then now it's a they kind of. They basically chopped away a third of their story with that release. Yep. Yeah. Well, in other news, Jinder Mahal, Akira Tozawa. Yeah, yeah, he sure did Mahal him. Mahal? I came upstairs, all I saw was, like, 
This guy looks like he spent the last eight months in a fucking gym. Yeah, he's, he's, he's jacked. I almost said juiced. It, that still would have made sense. Um, <laughs> not a chance this guy pisses clean. Oh, um, man. <laughs> uh, they, they still call him the modern name Maharaja here, but he seems uh, significantly less um, shanty, as you used to say. Yes. Indeed. Like he, 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 there, there is no chill to be had with the modern day Maharaja. Zero. All in. He just said, hey. Your face, my boot, meeting, right now. Brax! Yeah, that's it. That's all it was. It was, it was. He very much helped him relax by putting him to sleep. Yes. Sweet dreams and nightmares, Tozawa. All right. Exactly. United States champion Andrade defeated Apollo Crews. Yeah, this was weird. Uh, the fact that these two were already in a match against each other earlier in the night and Apollo Crews was already injured. Um so weird to give Apollo two matches on a night that he's injured, but... Yeah, always got to overwork a brother, don't you? Exactly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously Andrade beat Apollo, uh, which means Apollo is no longer in the Money in the Bank uh, ladder match because of a knee injury. Um, did, I, I don't know, I wonder who they're going to get to. Did they announce a replacement for him? I'm not sure. I didn't hear one yet. Okay. I forgot. Yeah, that's, that's what uh, that uh, you were talking about before. Uh, but yeah, so that was that was how that one went. Um, sad for uh, sad for Apollo. He was he did a lots of awesome talent, and uh, looked like he was getting a little bit of a push there. Okay. Well, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander defeated Everise. I forgot to say. Well. I guess uh, Apollo no longer on bended knee. No? I don't know. That didn't even make sense. Nothing. I was trying to say something witty and remarkable about, or make a witty remark about Apollo's injury, but I realized that's just cold. <laughs> yeah. That's just cold. That's some, that's some fucking Leo Rush on Emma's release shit. Oh. Oh. Damn. Okay, so. Everrise, is that um, Shane Thorne and Brandon Vink? I guess so. All right, cool. <laughs> Great Rick, name, right? Uh, Everrise is not a bad name still, but Vink? Yeah, that's a weird one. What were you thinking? That's a very, 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 very strange name. <laughs> like, um, yeah, this is, this is an okay match. Um, I mean, obviously, Ricochet and Cedric Alexander are awesome. Um seems like they've, you know, last two weeks, it, it, I like the fact that they've brought jobbers up for them, because like, oh. that's kind of building them up. Um, weird that MVP became the uh, manager for the, this team. Advocate of sorts, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, once again, having to see more of him on my fucking TV on Mondays. <laughs> Yeah, it was, you know, very, very good match. Uh, looks like they're probably going to have another match with them because they let Shane Thorne and Vink look real pissed off afterwards. So uh, we'll see uh, We'll see what they do probably tomorrow night. All right. Well, Drew McIntyre turned the tables on Seth Rollins during their contract signing. Yeah, uh, Drew came down after being uh, introduced uh, by Jerry. King Lawler and told Jerry, uh, he said, uh, now Jerry, you've seen enough of these things, uh, and you know how they usually go, this, and I can pretty much guarantee this one's gonna go that way, so, might be better you leave. <laughs> and, 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 uh, King just said, it's a good idea, and walked off. Um, <laughs> so that was great, uh, and then, yeah, while they were, uh, the contract signing and shit-talking uh, out of nowhere. Uh, 
fucking, what's his name? Uh, uh, Murphy fucking came in, uh, tried to attack. He got fucked up with a claymore yet again. Uh, and, and Seth got away and got in grief. You know? But, you know, knowing he's in trouble. So, this is going to be a great match. I can't wait to see uh, those two fuck each other up. Yep, yep, yep. It's, it's going to be something. Oh, Maylock. Bobby Roode, all right, what we got, oh, Robert Roode, Bobby Roode, no, Rick Roode, all right, so now, after bringing you the WWE news from WWE.com, we are going to, or we are going to <laughs> go on to the NXT, <laughs> yeah, <boy. laughs> all right, so, oh, quick hits, they have them, no, they don't. Isaiah Swerve Scott defeated El Hijo del Fantisma in an interim NXT Cruiserweight title tournament group B match. All in one yeah, breath. How do you like me now? You what? I said all in one breath. How do you like me now? <laughs> so, uh, yes, uh, Isaiah Swerve Scott is awesome. He's really, really good. I think he's got um, a lot of potential moving forward. I don't think he's, you know, anywhere near his, his uh, peak yet. Um, so I think when he gets, uh, you know, another year or so under his belt and is a little more uh, fluid with all of his, with his like, mic skills, he's going to be, like, rolling like crazy. Um, he's, uh, he beat Phantasma with, like, a roll-up, I think it was. Um, good shit. Like, it was a really good match. Um, Phantasma, I was surprised they had him lose. Uh, he's still pretty new, and it seemed like they were going to kind of push him right to the finals uh, quickly. But, uh, you know, it's not a single elimination tournament, so he's, uh, he's still in there for a bit. All right. Candice LeRae, the Poison Pixie, defeated Casey Cantazaro. Yeah, the Poison Pixie. Uh, she, her, her new gimmick reminds me a lot of Who? Uh, it's like, can't, I mean, uh, Eva Marie. Yeah. So, oh. Candice LeRae kind of, sorry, what? No, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, uh, Candice LeRae uh, kind of has that same thing going on now, except it's Johnny Gargano uh, walking down the, the ramp behind her, saying how she's the best wrestler of all time, and the nicest wrestler, and the sweetest, and all this other nonsense. Uh and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good stuff. Like, it's really good heel shit. Um, and she beat the living shit out of uh, my poor girl, out of Ricochet's poor girl, Casey Cassidaro, uh, with her new thing, the Wicked Stepsister, where she uh, basically does the, uh, like, an old surfboard hold from the back and smashes her face in. Uh, yeah, rough. Rough shit. Oh. Oh, Fabian Eichner and Marcel. Wait, wait, hold on. Sorry, sorry. That's one bad. Never mind. Oh, Fabian Eichner and Marcel Martel of Imperium attacked NXT Tag Team Champions Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatcher. Yeah, the vast majority of this segment uh, was not. It did not involve Eichner and Martel. Uh, the majority of this segment was. The newly bro game, which, as you can imagine, was the newlywed game for bros. Uh, and it was uh, a way that Matt Riddle was trying to uh, help, uh, or trying to, uh, you know, form a bond with Timothy Thatcher while, uh, while his uh, partner Pete Dunne is stuck in uh, Europe. And <laughs> the, the questions were hilarious. Like, it, uh, Byron Saxton was the host, and he came out in this shiny, god-awful, uh, uh, like, suit jacket that absolutely looked like any game show host from the 70s or 80s uh, died in it. Um, he was asking some questions, like, he asked uh, Timothy Thatcher, he asked Thatcher, what 
is, uh, what did your tag team partner have for breakfast this morning? And Saturn was immediately pissed off uh, as he's a surly guy and said, uh, uh, how the hell would I know what he had for breakfast this morning? I don't know. And Matt turns around the card and he had written down, I don't know. So the question was correctly answered. Tim <laughs> 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 Pinn on Matt Riddle's face Champion Charlotte Flair defeated Mia Yim. Yeah, uh, this is a really good match. Um, really cool because uh, Charlotte Flair's first match uh, in NXT was also against Mia Yim, a much younger, uh, not quite developed into this character, Mia Yim. Um, so, kind of cool, full circle thing. Uh, Charlotte did beat Mia in fairly easy fashion. Um, this was all just to build up more uh, how much of a gangster Charlotte is for next week's NXT, which this seems like the time to announce that next week's NXT is like a NXT takeover level NXT, um, where one of the matches will be the NXT Women's Championship match. Charlotte Flair defending against my girl, Io Shirai. Um, I think Charlotte's going to win that, unfortunately. I feel like it's too soon for Io to beat her. God damn it, I would love it if you try beat her for that title. Jenny's calling Eel still. I, that's what I want. I I'm, I love Eel Shirai. I think she's, she's like my favorite female in all of NXT. Okay. All right. Well, Mama Mia. <laughs> Looks like she hurt her Mia. Yep. <laughs> um. The, yo, this guy, oh my gosh, he's, he looks like a cyborg. Dexter oh, Loomis. Boy, yeah, the, yeah, Dexter Loomis is the man. Defeated Shane Thorne. Goddamn right he did. Shane Thorne can't get a win. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry, what's that? Crazy. Um, Dexter Loomis, I love it. Very much still got the MK Ultra patient vibe going on. Um, that, uh, that fucking, uh, spine buster he hit, uh, Shane Thorne with was insane. Like, really, really brutal. Um, and then he also hit him with this really savage Uranagi, um, and finished him with his, uh, his finisher, which they called the Anaconda Vice, I think it was? Um. Yeah, I think it was Anaconda Vice, they called it. Um, 
it's really what it is is it's a head and arm triangle um but it's fucking fantastic that they're using it um the only thing that i wish is that they would either change the angle of the camera that when they look at that move or let dexter do it a little tighter on the guy because you could tell that it wasn't tight enough if you know the move um so it's they, I, if they work on that a little bit, I think this guy is on track to be something very scary for a little while. All I know is when you get hired. What? All I know is when you get hired by the WWE because of your in-depth analysis. I hope you remember it, brother. <laughs> 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 That's all I got to say about that. You know what I mean? Like a, a title, <laughs> one of the title belts, maybe some tickets to some of the pay-per-views or some shit. When it comes to town, I don't know. It doesn't have to be too much. Just. You know, something, something, a little something, something, <laughs> a little something, something. Just saying, Just saying Hunter, holler at your boy. You know what I mean? Like, you got quality <laughs> when you, you got some quality reviews when you're talking to Tea Leaf. All right, so. <laughs> the, the best part of this match, though, like, just the, the, my favorite part was after he finished him, like, after uh, Loomis, or after uh, Thorne went out, um, Loomis just shot up immediately sitting down on his Yeah, man. Anything that could be... Like I said, from my first saw him, I'm like, one, this guy has raw written all over him. Two, yep. two, what the fuck is with that stare, bro? Like, I was trying to look at the TV on the angle that he was staring at to see what he was looking at and shit. Like, <laughs> I, like I'm trying to see if there's something in the crowd or some shit. You know what I mean? Like, there's no crowd, so what the hell are you looking at, bro? Like... Crazy eyes, so like it, it really works. He's, he's killing it for real. All right. I, I think he's. I think he's going to be huge. Oh man, Dexter Loomis pushed Thorn in a tumus. Yeah. Thorn in a tomb quick. <laughs> yes, there we go. All right. Yes, sir. Drake Maverick defeats Tony Nese in an interim NXT Cruiserweight Title Tournament Group A match. Concerned about that cough, I can almost guarantee it was more marijuana related than anything else. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> we are in separate studios, so worry not, worry not. All right, that being said, we'll go to oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, he said it all that he said all that needs to be said. Rockstar Spud, Rockstar Spud. All right, yeah, exactly. Oh, actually, before the, the other thing, the, the, the way he finished it was. Giant top rope bulldog. Ooh. Insane. <laughs> I don't know how you. How did he get him up there though? Because uh, Tony Nese went up there to hit him with the 450, and he knocked him off of his like feet on like hit you know uh, backed him onto the top rope. Okay. Uh, and then he, he he climbed up and grabbed him and fucking went over. It was awesome. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, that's that's dope. Still. All right. The yeah. at NXT North American Champion Keith Lee defeated Damian Priest. What else is there to say, man? Fuck Keith Lee. That motherfucker is a goddamn, like, he is a national treasure. He's so goddamn good. He's just um, such a big dude. Yeah, truly, like, bask in his glory. Limitless motherfucker. He's so good. He is massive. Um, like, he's massive. But he's agile as fuck. Yeah, oh, it's yeah, it's scary. He he should not be oh, not not just not be able to move the way he moves. He shouldn't be allowed to. <laughs> he, 
he should be stopped by law. Like the law, he's breaking the laws of physics, man. I'm telling you, breaks yeah, them, defies all. Unreal. Yeah, Einstein's gonna be coming after him for breaking laws of physics. You know what I mean? Like that's not how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, this, this, that was amazing. Great way to end off the show. Like they were, they were, you know, they both killed it. Uh, Damian Priest is also super, super, super good at what he does. Uh, it's just that as of right now, everybody except for Dominic Dijakovic is completely like it, you can't pay attention to anyone else in the ring when Keith Lee's there. Dominic, you can because he's as big as Keith, like in a in like he's he's taller than. But he's just like not as chubby. But like that dude also moves in ways that he shouldn't be able yeah, to move. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. when you see them in the ring, you can like it's 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 not hard to see them both. But when it's just Keith Lee versus anyone else, like yeah, the fuck whoever else is in there, like that's my boy. <laughs> yep. Yep. That is what's up for NXT, but as they say, pay attention to the limitless Keith Lee, bask in his glory. Now we got... I saw, go ahead. Sorry, before we go on, I saw, I saw an interview with Keith Lee where they asked him if he was to start a wrestling stable, what he would, what he, like, what his group would be called, uh, and he said, without hesitation, the Ginyu Force. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> That's great! He is a fucking nerd. <laughs> they pro- probably have to call it like the get you force or something. But Yeah, exactly. But he was absolutely immediately he immediately was like, Oh, I think it would be called the get you force. <laughs> you fucking nerd. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love it. That's great. <laughs> Alright, so we got some SmackDown results as of Friday, May first. Daniel Bryan defeated King Corbin by disqualification. Yeah, uh, this is an okay match. Daniel Bryan was uh, talking about how excited he is to be in the uh, Money in the Bank match and how like unique this match is specifically. Um, he also, uh, then Corbin came down and said that he was going to win the match and Bryan said, and what, if you, and what are you going to do if you do win it? <laughs> yeah. Which is which is just mean. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Baron Corbin fucked up my twice. <laughs> but, like, holy fuck, is that funny. I was like, that's, that, that is just rude, Daniel. And you just you wash your mouth out with soap for that. Mm-hmm. But good job. <laughs> Shit is funny. Uh, but, yeah, they, they got into a, uh, a big old fight. Uh, Daniel Bryan put Corbin into a yes lock on top of a ladder that was lying down in the ring and commentary acted as if I was like oh my god a yes lock on the ladder who what the fuck does that matter <laughs> if it was through the ladder maybe on the ladder come on well and he, yeah like it's not exactly he was just it's just a different surface he was on top of assholes it's not like he slams them uh, so that was that was a little lame um, but then, uh, yeah, Shinsuke and Cesaro came out, uh, and, uh, disqualification win goes to Daniel, uh, he then got thrown off the stage into a, into a ladder, that looked like a little bit more of a intelligent use of the ladder as a weapon to me, mm. um, but yeah, that was, uh, that was it. Ah. Well, not a matter of the size of the fight in the dog, it's a matter of, the, not a matter of the size of the dog in the fight. Not the size of the yeah, fight exactly. the dog. I have to say that the right let's, way. Let's hope there's no fucking dog food in this fucking feud. Oh my gosh, please. Sheamus, def- <laughs> oh, Sheamus defeated Leon Ruff. Yeah, who? Yeah, I don't know. So, another jobber. It looks like jobbers are uh, easier to find during the coronavirus than toilet paper. Um... And, uh, because they got lots of them. And they've been wiping their ass with new ones every week. God damn. 
I didn't see that, but that sucks. Carmella defeated Mandy Rose. Interesting way yeah. to go on about it. You what, sorry? I said that's an interesting way to go about it. Well, it looks like yeah, the pedals yeah. from this rose fell. Oh, yeah, you cut out there. I didn't hear that last time. I said it looks like the pedals fell off of this rose. Yeah. But I'm bummed. All right, let me see if I can <laughs> see this on here. Oh, it opens right on my phone. Jesus Christopher Cross. That's a dangerous one right there, yeah. All right, that, I was just looking at Mandy's bruise. It's uh, on her lower thigh, above her knee. It looks like it covers about eight square inches, and there's a, like, four-inch laceration. Yeah. Yeah, just it's, so. It, it's nasty. Like, it's, it's real, real nasty. Yeah, nice it's coloration bl- around the sides of it, too. Yeah, it's black. Oh man! Oh, get well soon. Uh, let me. Yeah, straight up. Let me. Oh no, it's I'm gone. I'm sure Otis will rub some sort of disgusting animal fat into it and make it better. Ugh. <laughs> Just rub bacon along the side of it. That being said, <laughs> the Forgotten Sons <laughs> defeated the New Day. <laughs> You're wrong, guy. You're so wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out why the why this has shades of some. Are the new day still the champs? Yeah. This has shades of some shit that I don't even want to talk about because it's so far past it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think they're I think they're just trying to make them uh what's it called I think they're just trying to make them believable for like a feud moving forward. Oh. Okay. Because now they have like, a... Yeah, now they have. Like, now that they've beat them once, yeah. it makes sense that they face them in, you know, title matches and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's, it's a smart move overall. Um, I, just, I, I don't know how necessary the Forgotten Sons are on the main roster or anything like that. But we'll, we'll see. I just, I don't, I, basically what I don't want is for them to go up to SmackDown and then get fucking just completely wasted and, you know, misused, like, certain other fucking amazing NXT tag teams have been. Yeah. I hear that. I hear like, that. You know, so, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, 
two yeah. weeks ago on Raw, we had the Viking Raiders doing carpool karaoke, and I wanted to fucking stab my own eyes out. Wow. That's my stuff. They're Both so of. stupid. Why? And why were they doing that? Uh, Vince has a reason for his randomness. I guess so. I don't understand it a, sometimes. He has a pension for trying to make badasses look like pussies. Yeah, he does. Which is weird, considering how much he likes badasses. Like, yeah. What the fuck, Vince? Wake I don't up. Why he, he always wants to make all these badass dudes look like soft, fucking, cuddly teddy bears. And it's like, shut the fuck up. Let him be gangsters. Because he gets power out of it, I guess. And you know what the worst part is? Like the new, there's, so there's a new Assassin's Creed game coming out at yeah. the end of this year based on Vikings. And so he's not even going to have gangster Vikings on TV when one of the biggest pop culture franchises is about to do badass Vikings. Like that's missing an opportunity to do something with badass characters and not look like you're the one ripping off pop culture. <laughs> like... Take a lesson from Tilly, y'all. He's talking the truth. Still. It's so it's so ass backwards. It is, man. I don't know. Maybe we need to tag them again and watch this or listen to this and hear what what, what yeah. you're saying because you, you're you speaking some facts still. Hard. Hard facts. I, I hope so. Hopefully I can talk a little bit of sense into the stone buddy. You know what I mean, though? But seriously, we'll see. All right. Now, Otis defeated Dolph Ziggler. The WWE Say Money in the... B- huh? Say it again. Otis defeated Dolph Ziggler in the WWE... Say it one more time. <laughs> Otis defeated Dolph Ziggler in the oh, WWE yeah, yeah. Money in the Bank qualifying match. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah, he did with a fucking glorious caterpillar. Oh, man. He fucking took that caterpillar and... Buried his bitch ass in the foundation. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Dude. I loved it. Uh, Otis should win this Money in the Bank ladder match. Uh, and Otis should. Uh, well, no, actually, I don't want that because I don't want him to have to lose to Bray. Uh, mm. He should look really good in the Money in the Bank ladder match. <laughs> and then somebody else should win. <laughs> Corbin should win so he could lose a third money in the bank contract. Oh, man. <laughs> three, oh. Years in a row, three years in a row waste the money in the bank, uh, the men's money in the bank match. Just do it. I dare you. Oh, my gosh. I dare you, WWE. Oh, my gosh. I dare you to make it useless. I dare you to make it completely meaningless next year. That would be so <laughs> terrible. <laughs> And not even just the Baron of the Money in the Bank match. Yep. <laughs> Baron would definitely be Baron then. See what oh, I did there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See what I did there? That would be, that would be followed by a future Endeavors letter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. Future Endeavors so quickly would be amazing. That's great. That is great. Oh, yeah. All right, so. so yeah, I ho- hopefully this is the end of Dolph Ziggler. Uh, and his involvement in the Otis Mandy storyline, and Sonia. I just want everything to work out for for Otis and Mandy forever. And like I said, they should be forced to be married in real life. Yeah, get them married. Get them hitched. <laughs> get them hitched. They make <laughs> a good couple. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you got some UFC news? Sports are back, bitches. And by sports, I mean one sport. The only one that matters. <laughs> uh, UFC 249, the the uh, the event that was supposed to be uh, the end of last month and was supposed to be headlined by Khabib Nurmagomedov versus Tony Ferguson, El Katui, for the uh, lightweight title, is not the card anymore because... Uh, Um, because uh, Khabib is in Russia, locked down. So the uh, the new main event is going to be Tony Elkatuli Ferguson, my man. He's uh, 12, 
twelve and zero in the UFC. He hasn't been defeated in over a decade. Going up against Justin the Highlight Gaethje, uh, who has had six UFC fights, has won four of them, has gotten five performance of the night bonuses. Yeah. Um, guaranteed violent fight. This fight is going to be fucked up. Uh, not only is that the main event, but also Dana has put together the one of the most fucked up cards of all time. Um, there is a three and a half hour prelim. I want to repeat that. The prelim card is three and a half hours long. That's insane. Took the words right out of my um, mouth. Yeah, the the first uh, three fights we've got are all bangers. That's Ryan Sam, seventeen and five, versus Sam Smiling Sam Alby, uh, who is thirty three and thirteen. Uh, we have Bryce Mitchell, who is twelve and zero. Uh, his nickname is uh, Bryce Thug Nasty Mitchell. Uh, he is uh, a young Bama boy from The Ultimate Fighter. He is an absolute savage. Uh, the last time he won, he went on a tirade about how much he loves Alabama and how Alabama he is and how uh, Reebok needs to hurry up and get some camo uh, fight shorts for him to wear to his next fight. Uh, Reebok had said they would get them for him, so hopefully they've actually got them for this uh, fight. Because if Bryce gets to come out in camel, I'm going to be so happy for that boy. Yeah, uh, Reebok is my Charles. brand still. Exactly. He, uh, he, he fought, uh, he's fighting Charles Rosa, who is 12 and 3. Uh, and then the last fight on the early prelims, we got Vicente Luque, 17, 7, and 1 no contest, uh, versus Nico Price, who's a hybrid. Uh, that's 14 uh, wins, 3 losses, and 1 no contest. He is a fucking savage dude, too. If they I'll actually send you a video block. Uh, I'll have, tell everybody on uh, tell everybody on the podcast they should definitely go search this out. Uh, YouTube, uh, UFC put up a YouTube uh, video today of Nico Price's uh, like top finishes, and his finishes are scary. Um, the very first one alone, he hit the guy with hammer fists from the bottom and knocked him flat unconscious. Um, there you go. Uh, and then, um, so after that fight, we've also got, uh, we've got Uriah Hall versus Ronaldo Souza. That's 15 and 9 versus 26 and 8. Uh, we got Carla Cookie Monster at Barza versus Michelle the Karate Hottie Waterson. Oh, uh, bad names. Those are some bad names right there. Oh, it's the best names. Yeah, Carlo Cookie Monster at Sparta and Michelle the Karate Hottie Watterson. Uh, we got 15 and 6 versus 17 and 7 there. That's in the women's strawweight division. That's going to be a badass fight. Both of those girls are savages. Uh, we've got in the heavyweight division Alexi Olenek versus Fabricio Verdum. Uh, Fabricio still division. fighting? Bro, yeah, it's his, it's his uh, first fight in a couple of years, actually. Yeah, he hasn't fought since. 2018, uh, he got knocked out in the sports round by Alexander Volkov, uh, but he's coming back to fight Alexi Olenek. Alexi Olenek is 58 victories and 13 losses. Uh, Fabrizio Verdum is 23 victories and 8 losses. Those are two veterans of the fucking game here. Um, we also have, let me see here, the, oh, the, uh, the main event for the prelim, the headlining this uh, first three and a half hour of fights, is Anthony Showtime Pettis, 22 victories, 10 losses, versus Donald Cowboy Cerrone, 36 Ooh. wins, 14 losses, welterweight division, three rounds, 15 minutes of just bad motherfuckers going after each other. Um, that's going to be a savage fight. Then we get to the main card. All of those badass fights were just the prelim. The main card, we have Greg Hardy, 5-2. and two. Versus Jorgen De Castro, six and zero oh, in the heavyweight division. Uh, we got Jeremy Little Heathen Steven versus Calvin Qatar, twenty-eight to seventeen versus twenty and four. Uh, we got the heavyweight division again. Francis Ngannou, fourteen victories, three losses, 
versus Jarzino Rosenstrike. Ten wins, zero losses. Jarzino Rosenstrike is a scary man. Uh, he, he knocked out Alistair Overeem uh, in his last fight. It was a five-round main event on a fight night card. Uh, at li- With literally two seconds left in the fifth round, he did a straight punch and split... Uh, fucking split uh, Alistair Overeem's lip from the bottom of his nose all the way through to the teeth like flapped his lip was just flapping in the fucking wind uh, last second KO it was fucking unbelievable um, co-main event we've got Bantamweight we've got Henry Cejudo who is uh, the uh, only Olympic gold medalist to also win a heavyweight or er, not win a UFC world title. Not only is he that, he's also he's also a two weight UFC world champion uh, in the bantam and, fe- and flyweight division. Uh, he's defending his bantam weight 135 pound title against the returning Dominic Cruz. Uh, Dominic Cruz is considered one of the greatest bantam weights of all time. He is the UFC's very first ever bantamweight champion. He was also a bantamweight champion in WBC before they went under. Uh, Dominic Cruz is 22 wins, 2 losses. He hasn't fought in 4 years because of injury. Um, this is his first fight back and it's, uh, it's going to be a fucking banger for the title. Uh, trying to get that belt back that he, uh, that he won so long ago. Mm. Uh, and then the main event is like I said, Tony El Kakui Ferguson. My man. 25 victories. Three losses, uh, going up against Justin the Highlight Gaethje, 21 wins, two losses. Uh, these two, anytime one of these guys is in the ring, it's guaranteed violence. You put both of these guys in the ring together, it's going to be a triple homicide. Because uh, nobody's leaving that ring of that ring alive. Mm. <laughs> Nobody. The referees even got a. The referees dead. Tony's dead. Justin's dead. They're all dead. They're all dead. Just done. Game over. And it has nothing to do with coronavirus. Trauma. <laughs> and, and Tony will die of blunt force trauma. But before he dies, he'll throw fucking Justin Gaethje in a fucking darts choke, which will like choke him unconscious and dead. And while he's struggling to get out of that, he'll fucking accidentally kick the referee in the face and he'll fall into the cage and slice his fucking head open. It's, it's, people are going to die. For sure. <laughs> That's stand. great. That's savage. great. Oh my gosh. The, that canvas, that 249 canvas, is going to be disgusting. Oh, the it's carnage! Be so drenched in blood. It's going to be just blood and viscera all over the place. Oh man. That's crazy. That's madness. UFC's back, bitches. Yep. Um, also, what I will say, not only is uh, Uncle Dana a savage, like, everyone, just on the knowledge that Uncle Dana has brought back the, a full card of this caliber this quickly, you have to give it up to him. But not only has he done that, four days later, on Wednesday, May 13th, there is UFC Fight Night, Smith versus Texera, which has Anthony Lionheart Smith versus Glover Texera, Ben Rockwell versus Ovin St. Cruz, Alexander Hernandez versus Drew Dober, Carl Robertson versus Marlon Vittori, Ricky Simon versus Ray Borg. Savage card as well. That is four days later. Now, from Wednesday, skip over Thursday and Friday, we get to Saturday, May 16th. UFC Fight Night Overeem versus Harris. We have Alistair Overeem versus Walt Harris. Claudia Gazalia versus uh, Angela Overkill Hill. Dan Ives versus Edson Barboza. Eric Anders versus Christoph Joko. Song Yazong versus Marlon Vera. Another Savage F card. Uh, and that is three full UFC cards in eight days during a pandemic. Suck it, other sports. Suck it. Two words for you. Wait on. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and he hasn't announced the card yet, but there's also another card coming for 
May twenty uh, third, he wants to do another card, and that card would be a Tyron Woodley fight. So we're uh, it'd be Tyron Woodley versus Gilbert Durino, from what I've seen, or Gilbert Burns. So yeah, uh, big uh, two months of fights. Uh, Dana White is dead set on getting back on schedule, and it looks like that motherfucker has only gone seven. So. Speaking of on schedule, I'd like to thank Samsung for this new uh, Galaxy Active Watch that I got from my wife. From my wife. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's making my life quite easier. Um, you know what I mean? I got to shout out the, the High Tea Leaf. You know what I mean? Maybe one day you'll sponsor us. Um, tea Leaf. High, high Tea Leaf. High Tea Leaf. High Tea <laughs> Got to shout out High Tea Leaf. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> that is me. High Tea Leaf. Oh, man. Um, I am the highest. WWE for putting on amazing shows, UFC for doing the same. Um, but yeah, those of you who are listening, thank you for your time. We appreciate it. Uh, we just gave you the last week of uh, sports combat action in less than an hour. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're doing the thing. Eventually, we'll have this back in studio thing, and maybe we'll start up a, a bit of a video podcast. Uh, we'll give you an infrequent yep, yep. video podcast. We're going to get some shit going. Uh, oh, the other thing we didn't get to talk about because uh, we didn't do it last week, uh, just real quickly, uh, new WWE video game announced, 2K Battlegrounds, looks like an old arcade-style, uh, over-the-top, crazy, feed your opponents to an alligator type of game, which I'm excited for. I think that looks fucking great. Mm. I'm still on WWE Supercard, you know what I mean? Like, gives me enough. I used to play um the other one, Champions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I've never played any of their mobile games. I, I don't play mobile games much. Uh, I, there, there's that, and then there's Call of Duty. Yeah. Those yeah, are the, yeah like, that's what I've been on. I've been on that Call of Duty. The Call of Duty? Oh, my. Bro, they have Call of Duty Mobile? Bro. Yeah. That shit is insane. I just finished the Battle Pass. Yep, yep, yep. That is insane, bro. Like, you're in, you're immersed into that, and the fluidity, and it's so crisp. Well, you know, that's combat. We're here to talk about combat sports. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess, I is there anything else to say? No, I think that's it. Well, I guess the only other thing we could say is, if you're not down with this, we got two words for you. Peace out. Fuck it. That too. Oh. all right for tilly this is the block another episode of tough talk with tilly and the block we out you know where to go for the one two three i was just gonna say where's the oh it is what it is and it is what it'll be you know where to go for the one two three